for we know that we will see him and our Savior face to face one day as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray to start things off, and then we're going to sing one of Gerald's favorite songs. I'm told that anytime somebody was singing this at church, that his knee was a bouncing up and down. So we're going to sing this one to the best of our ability. We're going to sing it fast and loud and happy today, all right? Let's go to Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for this day. Lord, we know that uh, there is grief, there is sorrow, there are tears because of the loss. But Lord, may we not see this as a permanent loss. But just for a moment of time here on earth, we will not be with our dear friend Gerald, but we know where he is. We know that we will see him again if we have Jesus Christ as our Savior, just like he did even at 19 years of age. Lord, I ask that you give us a wonderful time together as we remember, as we honor you through the honoring of your servant. Lord, help us as we sing, help us as we open your word, help us as we remember uh, our grandpa, our husband, our father, our brother, our friend. Lord, I ask that you would help us uh, to honor you and that we would have a wonderful time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and grab your songbooks, and you can stand with me. You can use the, your songbooks on page 369 or on the screen right above me. Uh, I thirsted in a barren land of sin and shame, springs of living water. Let's sing it out together. I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame, and nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul is satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. How sweet the living water from the hills of God, it makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path I've trod, I'm shouting hallelujah every day. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free, where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. Drinking at the springs of living water, happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, oh, wonderful and bountiful supply. Amen. You may be seated. You know, I think that Gerald liked that song so much because it's truly the gospel packed into three verses and a chorus. Uh, oh, sinner, won't you come today to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. Maybe you're here today and you knew Gerald, you knew the testimony of his love for Christ, his testimony of salvation, but maybe even today you're still doubting uh, the fact that maybe that salvation is not yours. Uh, may Gerald's favorite song remind us that thirsting spirits can be satisfied uh, in the blood of Calvary. Maybe even today would be the day of your salvation. Gerald Gibbs' obituary says this, Gerald E. Gibbs of Millington, our faithful, hardworking, and honest husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend, went to be with his Lord on Monday, November 8, 2021, at home in the care of his family. He was 78 years of age. Gerald was born to the late James and Evelyn Gibbs on November 1st, 1943 in Millington, Michigan. Gerald graduated from Millington High School. He married the love of his life, Phyllis Simmons, on Dece December 15, 1962. Together they celebrated 58 years of marriage and raised their six children. He was the second generation of Gibbs Trucking, of which he faithfully drove sugar and milk for 42 years. 
Gibbs Trucking, established in 1949, is now the oldest surviving milk driving company in the state. In his free time, Gerald enjoyed fishing, collecting, to to uh, collecting coins, antique guns, and steam engines. And boy, did he love steam engines. Above all, he was a devoted family man and will be missed by many. Gerald is forever loved by his wife, Phyllis, his six children, Robert and Sarah Gibbs, David and Judy Gibbs, Thomas and Melanie Gibbs, Steve and Lisa Gibbs, Tim uh, Timothy and Linda Gibbs, and Michelle Crumrine. 43 grandchildren. 43 grandchildren. 27 great-grandchildren, brothers Eugene and Paula Gibbs, and Larry and Beverly Gibbs, as well as several nieces, nephews, extended family, and as I look out here today, truly many friends. At this time, uh, it's my honor, it's, it's, uh, it will be a treat to have uh, Gerald's son, Tim, come up and sing for us. And I'm guessing if, if he needs our help, we're going we're gonna to jump in and sing with him today, all right? Well, turn your hymnals to 408, because I don't think I'll get through it, but <laughs> 408, close to thee, my mom wanted me to sing. I, uh, I uh, said no several times, because I didn't think I'd get through it, but... Uh, but uh, then again, she called me this morning, and I finally relented. But I'm going to try, and if I can't, you just join me, all right? So close to thee. Thou my everlasting portion, more than friend or life to me, all along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. All along my pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee. Not for ease or worldly pleasure, nor for fame my prayer shall be. Gladly will I toil and suffer, only let me walk with thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Gladly will I toil and suffer, only let me walk with thee. Lead me through the veil of shadows, bear me o'er life's fitful sea. Through the gate of life eternal, may I enter, Lord, with thee. Close to thee, close to thee, close to thee, close to thee. Through the gate of life eternal, may I enter, Lord. You were praying for me, I can tell. <laughs> Amen. Wasn't that good? Amen. Let's go ahead and sing one last song this morning. 429 in your hymn book if you need it. It'll be on the screen as well. May the Lord find us faithful. I do believe this really speaks to the life of Gerald, that the Lord did find him faithful. I know as soon as his eyes opened in heaven, he heard the words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. May we look at the example of Gerald and sing this song, May the Lord Find Us Faithful. God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
but has given us the strength to obey. With power and sound mind, with love the unfailing kind, will be not ashamed of his way. May the Lord find us faithful. May his word be our banner held high. May the Lord find us faithful every day, though we live, though we die. No man that seeketh after things of this life is a soldier who passes the test. Be faithful, be working, be running, be serving, be searching his word for his best. May the Lord find us faithful. May his word be our banner held high. May the Lord find us faithful every day, though we live, though we die. Listen to those words on that last. Living or dying. Living or dying. May honor be thine. From this wretched life you loved and forgave, a life that is on fire, be only our heart's desire. Be faithful from now to the grave. What I know of Gerald, what I know of Phyllis, and I know of the family, this was Gerald's life. A life that is on fire, be only his desire. Wasn't that truly Gerald's desire? To live for the Lord. Let's sing it out this morning. Living or dying, may honor be God's, be thine. Living or dying, may honor be thine. From this wretched life you loved and forgave. A life that is on fire, the only our hearts desire. Excellent singing this morning. I know Gerald would have loved that. In just a moment, after uh, Mike comes and sings, wherever he is, where do you go? There he is. When, uh, and you can come on up and get ready for that, Mike. Uh, after Mike sings, uh, Ger uh, Phyllis asked me if we would open it up uh, to the group here uh, for some open testimonies of the, the impact of Gerald Gibbs on your life. Uh, maybe the testimony, maybe your favorite memory. Not a long, not a long story. Uh, but just a, a short memory, a short story uh, that we would all enjoy hearing about God, God's faithfulness to Gerald and maybe how he impacted your life. Uh, if you are thinking even now, that's why I tell you now so you can have a moment here to think about it. If you would like to do that, uh, if you feel the Lord would have you to say something, we do have a microphone right up here if you can make it to the front uh, and speak just so that uh, everyone can hear. Uh, but if not, you can stand right there and speak loudly from your seat uh, so that everyone can hear, all right? We'll have that right after Mike sings for us. Um, like my Uncle Tim, I'll try to get through this as well. <coughs> the title of this song is uh, Precious Lord.
much for that, Mike. At this time, if there's someone uh, that would like to go ahead and come and give a memory, uh, I will start off by reading a letter, reading some memories uh, from Gerald's son, Tim. And then uh, if you have something you'd like to say uh, for uh, Phyllis and for the family here today, please stand where you're at or come up so that everyone can hear you nice and clear up here to the microphone. Who my dad was to me. Words that describe my dad. Selfless, honest, hardworking, a collector and preserver of history and lover of the family farm, a teacher, a loving husband and father, a Christ-like example, humble. Selfless, dad rarely made time for himself. Dad's time away from the business of trucking was very limited, but when he wasn't driving trucks, he was working on them. But when we had an important program or an important game, he would be there, even though it probably meant working on a truck most of the night when he got home. He was honest. This probably didn't make for him a very good businessman, but I know for a fact that my dad would lose money on business deals just to be honest. One time he purchased an antique gas pump from one of his farmers, and when he heard that one of the family members complained about it, he returned the pump, even though the farmer wanted him to have it. I know for a fact that he paid his mother for the milk business uh, until she was 65, which was more than 20 years after his father died. I know he would haul a new farmer's milk for the first six months for free. My mother described him, and, and I agree, he was an example of Nathaniel in the Bible, of whom Christ said of him, Behold a man in whom there is no guile. Hardworking. I can honestly say I did not know a harder working man than my father growing up. He was a great example for five boys of how to be a provider. There were many times when he would drive truck all day and then would work on a truck all night, and I mean all night. He would come home in the morning from working on the truck, take a nap, and go to work. Sometimes if it, were, if it was a Saturday or uh, summertime, one of us would go with him to keep him awake. Winters were the hardest for my dad. Snowstorm or not, he was driving in it. Back in the 70s and early 80s, we had some pretty bad snowstorms, and my dad and uncle, because they had a snowplow on their truck, were the only milk haulers to get to the dairy uh, those days. I know for a few days during those snowstorms, they wouldn't even get sleep. During the winter, he would go also cut wood uh, with us boys. Probably every three weeks or so on a Saturday after he got home from work, he would go cut wood. By the way, it was usually in the dark by Coleman Lantern Light. Hard working, it could be below zero outside, but the rest of us were freezing. He would be running a chainsaw with no gloves in a, in, in a sh shirt sleeves, and he would have uh, icicles of sweat hanging from his nose. He was a collector and preserver of history and lover of the American family farm. Dad loved history and antiques. But more than collecting, collecting antiques, he liked to tell their story. He loved to tell family stories and history. Even though he didn't own a farm, he lived and breathed farm life. He was, never more at he was never more at home than when he was talking to one of his farmers. He said of his farmers, they are a part of my family. I had a recent conversation with my cousin Dan Gibbs where he told me a story about my great-grandpa Howard Gibbs showing my dad how the iron forge worked where they would shoe the horses for plowing the fields. He said my dad had a real fascination for the forge. Actually, uh, he would have fit right in hundreds of years in the past. He just was born in the wrong century. He was a teacher. You wouldn't think it, but dad was a great teacher. Sometimes by the method of sink or swim, but his attitude was, you won't know till you try. If you could do it with your if you could do it with your hands, he could do it. Sometimes this could be irritating because you would be trying to do something for hours. He would come along and ask what you were doing, then do it in 30 seconds. He would then grin real big, the Gibbs grin. We've all seen it. From ear to ear, and never show a tooth. And say you weren't holding your face right. <laughs> He was a loving husband and father. I think the quintessential moment that best describes my dad's love for mom came a few years ago. 
He had been in the hospital for months, and they sent him home to die, but he came home and immediately got better. I went to see him the day he came home, and he called me over when mom wasn't watching and said, flowers. It was hard for him to talk, but I knew what he wanted. He had been pretty much unconscious for weeks, and the first thing he wanted was flowers for mom. So I went down and bought a dozen roses for mom, and he was grinning ear to ear when I told her what he did. All of us kids knew dad loved us. He might not have said it very much, but actions speak louder than words. We didn't grow up wealthy, but we didn't know any better. My dad never spent money on himself. We all knew it was a sacrifice for us to go to a Christian school, but he wanted us to have a Christian education. He was the disciplinarian, but I knew he never liked to be. Sometimes we went through, we would be, uh, sorry, sometimes when uh, we threw we would be in trouble for breaking something, usually a car. He would, he would just say, well, I guess you will have to fix it. He was a Christ-like example. Dad didn't talk if he, I'm sorry, Dad didn't talk it if he lived it every day. Dad walked in the fruit of the Spirit every day. He worked hard every day and never complained. I remember him talking to his farmers, and he always uh, was always smiling. He always showed the joy of the Lord. He was humble. I can honestly say that I have never known a more humble man than my dad. I believe my dad was blessed by God because he was a humble man. The Bible says God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. And that is why my father was a blessed man. Amen. Thank you very much for those words, Tim. Is there anybody else even right there at your seat or here to the microphone that would like to give a word of Gerald Gibbs? Anyone else today? Thank you for that. Anyone else today?
Thank you very much. Anyone else today? I'd like to give a word. Anyone else? Thank you. Amen. Anyone else today? Well, thank you very much for those uh, comments, those memories. Uh, immediately following the service, we're going to have a fellowship uh, luncheon, and I ask that you all stay and uh, continue these stories. I know there are lots of funny stories. You saw some of the slides with the, like, what did they call them? With the, the Bella Buddies. Belly Buddies. You guys seen the Belly Buddies? Stories like this we need to continue talking about over lunch today, all right? Uh, th those are great stories. Um, how many ha had milk right from the tanker? Anybody? All right, lots of people here. <laughs> lots of people here. I'd like to, I, I've kind of entitled this, this message here this morning for Gerald, I, I've entitled The Character of God in Gerald, because it seems only right to discuss where Gerald got these characteristics that we're talking about. They've been mentioned so much already in Tim's letter and in the comments and, and testimonies that you've heard today. As I spoke with Phyllis just the other day, she mentioned that all she wanted, and what I'm sure Gerald would have wanted for a service today, is the focus to be on the greatness of our God and the way that he has immensely blessed Gerald and Phyllis. So I'd like to just go over two of them. And the first one I'd like to talk about this morning is faithful. You know, Gerald was faithful. Would you agree with that? Gerald was faithful. He was faithful first and foremost to his God. Then he was faithful to his wife. He was faithful to his family, to his friends to his church, to the ministry that God had called him to, and to his job. It could easily be said today that faithfulness like Gerald's is a rare thing nowadays. But I ask you, how can a man, as great of a man as Gerald was, but we know as men, we're sinful creatures, how could a man, a sinful human being, be faithful to anything at all? You know, Gerald was a hands-on kind of guy with all of his life experience on trucks, farms, and the list could go on and on. He would tell us today that learning something stems from watching examples. I'm sure that his sons and his grandsons have learned a thing or two from just watching his example. Just like his kids, grandkids, farmers, and friends had an example of faithfulness to look at in Gerald, Gerald knew the best and perfect example when it come, came to faithfulness. It was this example that Jared looked, uh, Gerald looked up to since he was 19 years old when he took Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. 
Gerald knew five things about the faithfulness of his Savior. Jesus Christ was faithful to the cross. It wasn't even that he wanted to do. It wasn't something that Jesus even wanted to do. He said in the Garden of Gethsemane, what did he say? If this is not your will, please take it from me, Lord. Father, if, if I... I, I don't want this, but your will be done. We too ought to be faithful, even if we don't like the outcome. Gerald was for sure faithful. Jesus Christ was faithful to save. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore no condemnation to those who trust in the Lord. You know, Gerald knew the salvation. The condemnation of his sin was taken care of through the blood of Christ on the cross. You know, Gerald's belief that Christ took his sin, that belief must result in action. Can I say that again? Belief results in action. Gerald believed in the faithfulness of Christ to save his soul. And therefore, Gerald's desire was to live each day, each of the days that God gave him on this earth, to bring glory back to God. Tim mentioned that everyone knew that his dad was a Christian. All the farmers on the milk route that Gerald saw as family, they knew that he was a Christian and that God had changed his life. You believe in God's faithfulness to save must result. A belief in God's salvation must result in a life of faithful service to God, not for salvation, but rather because of salvation. He knew that Christ was faithful to the cross. Gerald knew that his Savior was faithful to save. He knew that Jesus Christ is faithful to lead. He gave us his Holy Spirit to guide us along our Christian walk. You know, Gerald was a strong man. There were many things that he could do just because he was a strong man. But he realized his weakness when it came to following after God in his own power. And he surrendered to the leading and power of the Holy Spirit indwelling him. It's the only reason that he could do anything for the Lord. He understood his strength. His weakness was made perfect in God's strength. Jesus was faithful to the cross. Gerald was faithful to the job set before him. Jesus was faithful to save. Gerald was faithful to live for him. Jesus was faithful to lead. Gerald was faithful to surrender to the Holy Spirit. And he knew Jesus Christ is faithful to forgive. The faithfulness of Jesus Christ to the cross, to save, to lead, to forgive, it was because of this faithfulness, because of the faithfulness of Christ, that Gerald could be faithful to what God had given him. You know, it says in Lamentations 3, it says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Gerald understood that open fellowship with God is determined by your repentance and his forgiveness. He knew to keep the way clear between his soul and the Savior. He knew that Jesus Christ was faithful to forgive. And lastly, he knew that Jesus was faithful to provide. Gerald and his family many times truly leaned on the reality of Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where it says, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. He believed this. He trusted in the faithfulness of God to provide. We could even end verse 9 by saying, Therefore I will glory in my lacking that the power of Christ might be seen in me. I can hear Gerald living those words out. Therefore, I will glory, even if I'm lacking, that the power of Christ might be seen through my life. Gerald was faithful. Why? Because he served a faithful God. Secondly, and lastly this morning, I want to talk about the characteristic of God that we saw very clearly lived out in the life of Gerald Gibbs and that is honesty. We even heard it talked about this morning already, but Gerald was honest. I mean, he was really honest. Honest in word and honest in deed. Many stories could be told of how his honesty kept him out of trouble and sometimes even got him into trouble. The farmers on his milk route knew that he was honest. They knew that 
They had to work together to even make ends meet. What a blessing for each of Gerald's many farmers over the years to know that the Gibbs milk route was an honest business. It's a rare thing today. Did you know that, the, that Gerald's father started that milk route in 1949, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, 1949 with a truck and milk cans. And now Gibbs Trucking has the largest milk trailers in all of the nation, right? Very, very close to it. What a testimony of honesty. I believe that honesty this morning, please listen to these words, because I believe that the honesty that we saw lived out in Gerald is born out of faith. When you believe something, think about this with me this morning, when you believe something to be true, your confidence grows. And when your confidence grows in the truth, you take on the characteristic of honesty. Listen, honesty not, is not necessarily, please, please hear this for what it means. Honesty, therefore, is not necessarily a choice. Honesty is either your character, character or it is not. Your decisions and your actions are a result of your character, who you are as a person. Did you know that a man can say something that is true outwardly, but not hold to that truth? inwardly we all know that therefore honesty is a belief i'm sorry to say that a man is honest is to say that what they are at the core of who they are is a person that values and holds on to truth therefore honesty is a belief in a truth that is lived out i want to say that again because i believe this exemplifies gerald's life honesty is the belief in truth lived out. Therefore, I'd say that the time of Gerald's life was honesty proven time and time again. I'm telling you all this morning that Gerald was an honest man. So what truth, then, was he holding on to? If he was an honest man, we all agree this morning that he was an honest man, he was a faithful man, but if honesty is holding on to truth and living it out, what was the truth that Gerald held on to? It was the truth of God's word. One of those truths, one of those promises that Gerald desperately held on to was Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It was mentioned even in Tim's letter that Gerald was a blessed man. Wouldn't we say that he was a blessed man? He was a blessed man because God took care of him and his family. 2 Corinthians 8, 20 says, Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Gerald desired to be honest, not just before God, but before men. He desired to be honest with the stewardship of God's blessings. You know, the stewardship of God's blessings that Gerald looked at so wonderfully was his boys and his daughter and his grandkids, 43 grandkids, 27 great-grandkids, the farmers that he called family. He, was, he desired to be honest before the Lord because of the stewardship of God's blessings. He knew that God would take care of them. He knew it. That belief was lived out in honesty. He lived that truth. He wanted his life of honest living to point to Christ. So can I challenge you this morning with something very simple? The characteristics, two characteristics that we see. There are many, many others. But just this morning, two of them faithfulness, and honesty. Listen, these were not Gerald's works to gain salvation. These were part of Gerald's character because he first believed the truth of God's word, and secondly, he desired to please God with his life. So let me challenge you. Do you believe, speaking to his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren, do you believe that God is faithful? 
you believe it. Remember what I said, belief must result in action. You look at the life, the example, the testimony, the legacy of faithfulness and honesty of Gerald Gibbs. And let me ask you, do you believe God is faithful? You can look at his life and say God was faithful to him. He was faithful to God and God was faithful to him. Never lacked. Always was blessed. Always was giving. Do you believe that God's mercies are new every morning? Do you believe God takes care of his own? Do you believe these things? Do you believe that he blesses those that are faithful to him? Do you believe it? Let me ask it a little more pointedly. Do you believe it the way that your grandpa believed it? What truth are you holding on to today? To be, an, uh, to be characterized as an honest person will always point back to what truth that you are holding on to. So let me ask you this morning, what truth are you holding on to? Your character will be formed by what you believe in. Grandkids, great-grandkids, listen. Do you want to be like your grandpa? Do you want to be seen as a faithful, honest person in, this, in, in your life? Then you must be de desire to be like Christ. We would all do well to desire to have the characteristics of Gerald Gibbs to be a part of our life, but only in so much that those characteristics are born out of a love and faithfulness to God. As I think of Gerald's life, the Lord kept bringing me back to this passage. It's a very well-known passage. And we often look at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, as, as kind of the Christian life. Right? What do we ought to do now? But I look at this, and it's kept coming back to my, my mind this week as I thought about Gerald and his family. And I see these verses, and I truly do see the life of Gerald and Phyllis and the whole Gibbs clan. Let me read these verses to you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know, those mercies are new every morning. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice because our life is not our own. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I love those two words. Because I truly believe, and, and even by a head nod this morning, would you believe, would you say that reasonable service truly spoke of Gerald Gibbs? Humble, simple, honest living. If that's what the Lord said, we're going to do it. If the Lord speaks to me to give this, I'm going to do it. If the Lord tells me I need to help this neighbor out, that's what I'm going to do. Reasonable service. It's what we ought to be doing. It's reasonable. It's simple. It's humble. It's honest living. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Gerald was transformed through the grace of God into a new creature. And everyone that knew him at all knew this truth. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Isn't that Gerald? He never thought of himself. I've, I've been told that the only thing he ever did for himself in life is sitting right outside of the front of the church here today. Bought that old truck for a couple hundred bucks, right? $500 years ago and took him years to get it put together. All of his other time was spent with his kids on a milk route, plowing snow, cutting wood, <laughs> being a grandpa. Shouldn't think highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Gerald was a humble man. He was a simple man, cut and dry, right and wrong. 
He had confident faith in God's promises through every trial. What an example and a challenge. Can I say an example and a challenge that we have been given? Praise the Lord that we have been given through the life of Gerald Gibbs. Do not soon forget, grandkids, great-grandkids, family, friends. Do not soon forget this example, but allow this example to point you to the one that Gerald leaned on all his life and now worships face to face. Gerald's life spoke the words of the song that we sang this morning together. And, I, and in closing, I'd like to read just a couple of those words, a couple of those verses. And as you listen, I want you to think of the example of Gerald's life. No man that seeketh after things of this life is a soldier who passes the test. Be faithful. Be working. Be running. Be active. Be serving. Be searching his word for his best. Living or dying, may honor be thine. From this wretched life you loved and forgave. A life that is on fire. Be only our heart's desire. Be faithful now, from now to the grave. May the Lord find us faithful. May his word be our banner held high. May the Lord find us faithful every day, though we live, though we die. The Lord has truly found him faithful. He held high the truth of God's word. He has heard, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In life and in death, may God be praised through the life of Gerald Gibbs. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the example. Lord, we thank you so much for the testimony, the legacy left behind with your servant, Gerald Gibbs. Lord, we love him. We miss him. We will miss him. The hurt will not soon go away, but Lord, you are the very God of peace. That's what we're asking for today. We're asking for comfort for the family and friends that grieve the loss. But also, Lord, and even as much, Lord, I ask that you would help us to praise you, praise your name. Because of the life that we have been able to see, the testimony, the example, even that it was said this morning. Gerald Gibbs, when you looked at him, you saw Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to praise you because of that. Help us to honor him. Help us to honor his legacy. Help his, his sons and his daughter and his grandkids and great-grandkids to live on in the faithfulness and honesty that they saw in their grandpa. But not because he was a perfect man, but, but because he served a faithful Savior. Because he held on to the truth of God's word. Lord, challenge us. Lord, if there's someone here today, and Lord, there's a large enough crowd here that it very well might be that someone does not know you as their Savior. Would you speak to their heart today, right now, that they would understand their need of a Savior, just like Gerald did many years ago, that they would understand the truth of God's word and the truth of Jesus' blood on the cross as the atonement for their sin, and that today they would make today the day of their salvation, that they would accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, and one day would see Gerald face to face again. Lord, we love you. We love the Gibbs family. We, lo we love Gerald. Would you give us peace and comfort and joy today? In your precious son's name, amen. Thank you again for coming today. If that is you today, that you, you'd say, Pastor Dell, I, I do need to know the same saving grace that Gerald knew for so many years. I would love to speak with you. Phyllis would love to speak with you. Many of us here would love to speak with you to show you from God's word how you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. 
just following the service today, I said it earlier, uh, we would love to have each and every one of you stay for a, uh, a luncheon and, and sharing testimonies and memories and fun stories of Gerald and his life and with his kids and grandkids and family. And uh, this morning, what we're going to do, I'm going to hand it over to uh, the, the funeral director, and uh, he's going to dismiss you from the back to, if, if so need, or if so led to, uh, come down and uh, share your last respects and uh, spend a moment here at the casket before uh, you can go off into the gymnasium for our luncheon. And, uh, and then we will have, the family will have a moment of time here around the casket in prayer, all right? Uh, so at this time, I'm going to hand it back over to the funeral director.